Hi, I'm Alan Morris of uh, Whiting Door. We provide the rear roll-up door and command lift power door opener for the Staples delivery trucks. Today we're going to be going over basic operation and troubleshooting of the systems. This is the command lift control box, which is comprised of the main circuit board, or the brain, a 12 to 32 volt step-up converter, and a cycle counter. There's also a coil cable assembly, which carries the signals back to the box, and there are two magnetic sensors. There is also a drive motor assembly. To operate the rear roll-up door with the remote control, press button number 3 to open, 4 to close. To stop the door during movement, press either button again. You can operate the rear roll-up door without the remote control by way of the switch mounted on the rear corner post on the curb side. Push the switch up to open, down to close. The vehicle is equipped with rear door open, rear door close, cab mounted switches. It's also equipped with a door jar indicator light. The ignition key needs to be in the on position for the indicator light to work. To operate these switches, simply push door open, the door will start to move and the indicator light will come on. To stop the door, press the button again and it will stop in position. To close the door, press door close, wait for the indicator light to go out before moving the vehicle. And now for troubleshooting the rear roll-up door. Most of the work will be done on the command lift control box mounted in the front corner beside the side door. Step one of troubleshooting is to confirm that the remote control is actually working. To do this, you will need to go to the control box and watch the LED indicator lights when you press the button. When you press the button, the light should come on. If it doesn't come on, you will need to change the batteries or the key fob. This one did work. The next step is to confirm that the converter is working properly. Its purpose is to step the voltage up from 12 to 32 volts. To do this, we'll pull these two wires off the top corner of the PCB and check the voltage with your voltage meter. This one is reading 33 volts. The converter is working properly. If it's reading 12 or 0, the converter is faulty and needs to be replaced. The next step is to check the fuse mounted on the circuit board. To do this, simply pull it off, check it. If it's blown, you need to replace it. Otherwise, simply replace it back onto the board. When you do this, there will be a small spark. The next step is to confirm that we have power coming from the command lift circuit board down through the motors. This is done on a terminal strip in the center. Put your voltage meter on the terminals and press the button. In this case, we could hear the relays click and the motors running and the voltage meter is reading 31.3 volts. This is good. If we weren't getting any voltage or hear any sounds, the circuit board would need to be replaced. The command lift circuit board has LED indicators throughout to indicate different states. The LED that's lit right now indicates that the door is open and it is getting the signal from the door open sensor on command lift rail. When the door is in a closed position, this LED on the circuit board should be illuminated. When the key fob remote is pressed, there are LED lights on the circuit board that indicate it got a signal for open and close. The open LED is this one. The closed LED is this one. The next step is to confirm power at the motors when the button is pressed. To do this, you'll need to remove the front cover by removing the four screws and the zip tie. Pull the cover down. Separate the cable connector. Check voltage here. If you don't have 32 volts here, the cable is compromised between the control box and the motor unit and needs to be replaced. After reinstalling the cover on the motor unit, it's important to ensure that the tab is in alignment with the groove on the slider and that you reattach the zip tie that holds the cable to the lid. Now we'll talk about the mechanical operation of the command lift and the rear roll-up door. First thing we'll do is disengage the command lift drive motor from the gears. To do this, you pull the yellow loop towards the rear of the truck. The motor is now released and you can move the door manually. To re-engage the motors, you open the cover, use a screwdriver to move the lever back towards the front of the truck. It will take two hands and some force to make it click into position. The motors are now locked back into position. 
close the cover. To check the proper operation of the door without the command lift, you'll have to remove the turnbuckle that connects the door to the drive motors. To do so, pull the yellow loop, release the motors, which will relieve the tension on the turnbuckle. Remove the clevis pin. The door is now free from the command lift. Push the motors forward out of the way. You can now check the proper operation of the door. The proper operation of the command lift is dependent upon the smooth and balanced operation of the rear roll-up door. You need to check this by hand. The door should stay in position, open, closed, and anywhere in between. Otherwise, balance adjustments need to be made. A safety feature of the command lift is automatic reversal of the door when it encounters an obstruction in the downward motion. Automatic reversal can also be caused from the low voltage situation. Intermittent operation of the door in either direction, up or down, could be a result of low voltage at the batteries or the door could require maintenance. The next thing we want to talk about is the possible chafing of the coil cable assembly which carries power to the drive motors. To check these, you need to ensure that the cable moves freely within the track and there are no tight spots. If there are tight spots and chafing occurs, you could create a short circuit. If there are tight spots, the coil cable and slider need to be removed and recoiled. If you've identified chafing of coil cable assembly or excess, re excess resistance in the command lift track, you'll need to remove the slider and wind the coil cable to reduce the diameter. To do so, first cut the cable tie that's on the command lift light cover. Remove the cover, unplug the motors, and unplug the light assembly. Pull the slider all the way out the end of the track. We are holding the slider in this position facing the rear of the vehicle. vehicle. Turn the slider counterclockwise five times. Four, five. This reduces the overall diameter of the cable, which should reduce resistance in the track. Plug motors back in, plug the lights back in, reinstall the cover. Be sure to include the zip tie to make sure the cable doesn't chafe on the track in movement. The next thing we'll discuss is the position of the closed door sensor. Positioning of the sensor is critical for proper operation of the door. The sensor is located in the track behind the black cover just above the slider with the door in the closed position. To check this, you'll need to remove the cover. Simply pull the cover off and away from the track. Check the position of the slider. It is held in place with a set screw. To adjust the slider, loosen the set screw and you can move it accordingly. If the slider is too far towards the back of the vehicle, the door will hit the floor in reverse. It needs to be approximately one inch behind the slider. Set it back into position, clamp it and replace the cover. To adjust the door fully open position, you have to gain access to the door open sensor, which is located in the track right above the slider. First, remove the black cover, loosen the screw, move the sensor towards the rear of the vehicle for less opening, towards the front of the vehicle for further opening, reset the screw, and replace the cover.